everybody, welcome to my UGC name necklace tutorial. And so what we're going to be doing is opening Roblox Studio and then creating a new experience. And here we're going to get the rig that we're going to be modeling our necklace on. So I will leave a link for the load avatar plugin in the description. So once you open that, you want to type in the username of the avatar you're going to model your thing on. And I'm just typing in my alt account username and spawning it as an R6. And then I'm just deleting the spawn point so it's not in my way, and I'm moving my avatar up to the edge of the base plate. And then what I'm going to do is go into the workplace and delete all the accessories and clothing that is on my avatar so that it's not distracting me when I'm modeling. And then I'm just going to right click on my avatar in workplace and then export it as a rig in my downloads. Okay, so now you're going to open Blender and just click off the main menu thing. And then you want to highlight everything that's in Blender already and then click X to delete it. And this little thing in the top right of your screen, you can move around to rotate your screen. And this little hand button, you can go like up and down and side to side. Now we're going to add the rig that we made into Blender. So you're going to want to go to File. And then you want to go down to Import. And then go down to Wavefront OBJ. And then find the rig that you made in your downloads or your folders wherever you decide to put it then you're just going to click it and click import obj and your thing should appear in the middle but if it doesn't you can use the arrow tool on the side to move it around and just center it like so so the first thing we're going to be doing is making the chain for the necklace so you're going to do that by going to add and then curve and then circle so a circle will appear under your rig and you just want to use the arrow tool to move it up around the neck and obviously this is much too big, but first I'm going to show you what happens when you go into data. Then you want to go under geometry, and this is how we're going to size up the width of the circle, because you see it's like thin right now and you can't really see it. So you're going to be using the depth to make it bigger, like thicker, yeah, so it'll look like that. But we're not going to do that right now because it will not size right when we scale it down. So we're going to click it and then click s to scale and then we want to scale it down closer to the size of our neck but not too small and you just want to move it and adjust it as you go scaling and moving it so just bring it forward a little bit and once you have it where you want it you can use the depth tool to scale it up and make it more visible. I keep mine relatively thin, but you can make yours as thick or thin as you want. And then in order to make this more like a proper necklace looking shape, we want to bring it down and scale the sides in. So what we're going to do is we're going to click it and then we're going to go into edit mode. You can do that by going to the top left and clicking edit mode or you can do tab on your keyboard. And in order to move it down, you wanna click the little vertices that are sticking out the sides of the circle, and you can click the arrow tool and just move it down and scale it around. And just do that until you have it how you want it and it looks good on your character. So now that you have the chain of your necklace done, we're gonna work on the little clasp that will attach to the charms. So we're going to go to add, and then curve, and then circle. And now that you've added your circle, you want to move it up, and you want to move it over so that you can see it more clearly. And now we're going to rotate the circle. So we're going to do R, X, 90. And now we're going to do R, Z, 90. Now that we have it rotated, we're going to move it over and we're going to scale it down using S on our keyboard. And you can use G to move it freely. So now that I have my circle, I'm going to add some depth to it by going back into the geometry area. And once I have the depth of the circle, 
I'm going to go into edit mode, which is tab, or you can do it manually. And I'm going to scale it into sort of like an oval shape so that it looks more like a clasp. Once you're finished shaping your clasp, just move it and rotate it so that it fits onto your necklace chain. And just adjust it to your liking until it fits perfectly. Here's my necklace base after finishing my clasp. I have mine in the middle, but you can move yours to anywhere you want on your necklace. Okay, now to make the reference image for the text, I use an app called Fonto on my iPad. And I just click the camera icon, then I click plain images, and I pick a white background. Then I click the share button, and I click use. And I just have to add text, and I just type whatever I want. And I just size it and color it black. It doesn't really matter what the color is, I just usually just color it black. And then I just save it and send it to my computer. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the letters. So once you've uploaded your reference image to your computer, you're going to go to add. And then you're going to go to image. And then reference. And then you're going to find your image in your files. And then you're just going to click it and you're going to click load reference image. And then you want to click G and move it to the side. And I'm in Y frame room, which you can do by going on the top right and clicking the Y. And now we're going to add a plane in front of it. So we're going to go add and then mesh and then plane. And we're going to rotate it. So RX 90. And then we're going to click G. And then we're just going to move it in front of the reference image and we're going to scale it so that it's bigger than the letters that we're going to be cutting out. So once you've finished adjusting it, what you're going to want to do is move your screen so it's in the middle and click the semi-transparency button at the top. And you should be able to see your text through your plane. And you're going to want to click your plane and click tab and go into edit mode. And then you're going to want to click K to get the knife. And with the knife, you're going to be able to add vertices. And you're going to want to click around your letters. And you want to make sure to add a bunch of vertices so that it has a round shape but not too many because... That will increase the number of triangles, and you're only allowed to have so many triangles when you upload UGC. So you're just going to trace around the text that you've added, and I'll see you when you've done that. Okay, so I'm just doing the last few, and once you get to the last one, you want to double click to get rid of the knife. And then you want to click space on your keyboard, and just click out of it, and highlight the vertices with your mouse, and then click X and click vertices to get rid of them. So once you've done that, we're going to be cutting out the extra bits of letters that we don't need. So to cut out this part here, I'm just making a couple lines with the knife tool. And I want to make sure I have an intersecting vertice in the middle so I can highlight it and then click X and vertices to delete. I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but this is just how I do it, so you can feel free to do it the same way. And to get rid of middle letter parts, you can just highlight the whole thing, and then repeat the same process of adding a line through it, and then another line to create an intersecting vertice. So as you can see here, I'm adding a line across it, and then I just click space, and then I click K again, and then add another line. And then click space to get out of it, and then I just highlight it, X, and delete. And as you can see, we've deleted it, and it's hollow now, which is what we want. And we're going to continue to do that with the rest of the empty spaces in the letters. So once you're done that, you can click tab to go back into object mode, click your reference image, X, and delete. Then you want to turn your transparency back on, and you want to click your text, click tab, and then turn into X view mode. Click A to select all, and then click E to extrude, and scroll your mouse to the left to make the text thicker. 
this is so it's not flat and as you can see it has more dimension now and if you want to you can bevel your text which you do by clicking on edit mode a and then control b to bevel and make sure you don't bevel too much because it will become glitchy like what just happened there and yeah this just makes your text look a little more rounded and more clean so well, now you can just scale your text down and just use arrows and rotation to move it over to your necklace and you want to try and rotate it so that one of the letters is intersecting with the clasp so it looks like it's attached as you can see here i'm trying to line up the g with the clasp so that it looks like it's part of the necklace Here's what mine ended up looking like, and now we're going to add another little charm on the side. First, we're going to find a reference image for our charm, so I'm just searching up a heart, and I'm just going to pick an image, the color or anything won't really matter, and I'm just going to right click on it and save it to my downloads. And you can make your own image if you want, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to pick something simple. So for the charm, we're going to repeat a very similar process to the letters of the necklace. So we're going to go to add and then image and reference. And we're going to upload the reference image that we just got from Google. We're going to load it and then click G to move it over and S to scale. And then we're just going to move our screen over using a little hand tool. And now we're going to add the plane again. So add mesh plane and then we're going to rotate it, which is RX 90. And we're going to use G to move it in front of the heart and scale tool to make it wider than the reference image. You're going to want to center your screen and click the transparency tool again at the top. And you want to click your plane, click tab, and then click K. And then you just want to start tracing your heart like we did earlier. And once you're done, you just want to double click the first vertice. And then you want to click space and then click out of it. And then you're going to want to delete your vertices by highlighting, clicking X, and then vertices. And now just tab to go back into object mode and click the outline of your reference image, then X to delete. And you want to click your heart again, tab to go into edit mode, click X view, A, and then E to extrude. Then you can turn your transparency off, and as you can see, you have a heart, but it looks a little choppy, so we're going to go back into Edmo, which is tab, and then we're going to click A, and then Control b to bevel. Now you just want to move it over and place it where you want on your necklace. So once you have your charm where you want it, you're going to click your original clasp and click Shift-D to duplicate. And then you want to move your copy to where your charm is and then just rotate it so that it lines up. So here is my finished necklace design and now we're going to move on to texturing and UV unwrapping. So now that we have the basic shape of our necklace done, we're going to move on to texturing and doing the small little specific stuff. So we're going to go to viewport overlays at the top and you see a bunch of settings, but we're going to turn on statistics and you'll see all these numbers pop up on the left corner of your screen. And Roblox only allows 4,000 triangles and I have 7,000, so we're going to need to get rid of some of them. To do this, we're going to go to modifiers, which is a little wrench tool and click add modifier. And we're going to click decimate. And we're going to scale it down. This basically just removes like extra triangles and it does make your thing appear less smooth. But as long as you don't decimate it too much like what just happened there, it should be fine. And we're going to do this with all the stuff we've created. You're just going to click a little arrow and then click apply. And we're going to do it to the charm now. We're just going to decimate it. And you can see the triangles going down in the top as we decimate it. And we're just trying to get it under 4,000. And I forgot to do this here, but we have to convert the chain and the clasps into meshes before we can decimate. As you can see, I'm realizing that here. So what you're going to want to do is click the, well, first I'm doing the heart. You're going to click, right click, and then convert, and then convert to mesh. And then you can decimate it, and then apply. 
so then you click these and you can click both of them by holding shift and clicking them and then right click convert and mesh and then you can decimate and arrow apply and you're just going to do this with the chain as well and once you're under 4,000 triangles you should be good and you don't have to do anything anymore now i'm just clicking everything and shading auto smooth so it looks more like smooth and rounded instead of like sharp with all the vertices so now i'm gonna hold shift and click the clasps and the chain and then right click and click join because we're texturing them the same so they can be together as a group now you're gonna click uv editing at the top and i'm just adjusting my screen so that i can see the necklace clearly because if you can't see it, it's kind of hard to pick the different parts so once I've got that centered I'm just gonna scale it in and I'm gonna click A because my chain is already highlighted and I'm gonna click UV and UV unwrap and I'm gonna highlight all the parts and click S to scale down and then G to move into the corner I'm gonna click off and then click the text and then tab a and then just ignore this part i didn't mean to do that um and then you're gonna highlight the text and then s to scale down and then g and you want to make sure that when you're moving the parts they don't overlap at all because then the textures will get mixed up so i'm doing the same thing with the heart but i'm uv unwrapping it and then s to scale and then g to move into the corner So once you're done, you can highlight everything, and then you'll see that everything is separated and not overlapping. So now we're just going to do simple coloring, so we're going to click the red circle on the left, and then we're going to click all our parts and right click and then click join, so we can make a color palette. So now we're going to click new, and we're going to click the yellow circle in your base color, and then click image texture, and you can click the things at the top to change your viewing, and you can click new and then just name your color palette whatever you want and change the scaling to 256 by 256 because that's how Roblox does it. And then I just scale mine up to white and then just click OK. So now we have the color palette for our necklace and we're going to go up to texture paint beside UV editing at the top. And we're just going to do the same thing like scaling the necklace so we can see it on the side. And now I'm just adjusting the white picture so I can see it on my screen. So now what I'm going to do is put my necklace in object mode at the top and then tab A so we can see everything. And now you just pick the color that you want your necklace to be. So I want my heart to be pink so I color pink over the UV unwrap that's at the top there. And you just do the same with the rest of your necklace. So once you're done coloring, you just want to look at it in all the different viewing settings. As you can see, it's colored. It does look slightly different in Roblox. It looks a bit duller in Blender, but that's normal. So now you want to go to image and then save as, and you just want to save a copy of your color palette in case it doesn't import properly. And then you could just upload it as a decal to Roblox so your texture will still work. So once you save that, your model is ready to export, but first you want to go to viewport overlays and then you want to turn on face orientation just to make sure that all the sides are facing the right way. And if anything's red, just go into edit mode, which is tab and then A and then shift N to recalculate your normals. So you can turn that off and then just click your model and then file, export, and then wavefront OBJ. And then you're just going to name your UGC. And then you just export it as an object. And there you go. Now you can just upload your necklace to Roblox.